A dramatic moment in a San Francisco courtroom. Ten alleged gang members were charged with several Bay Area murders. KPX finds Melissa Kane on this long awaited path to justice. Melissa? That's right, Veronica and Alan. This morning, the courtroom was packed with people hoping to get a glimpse of the men arrested for murder. And some of the deaths are more than 10 years old. And we learned today that solving these older crimes required careful cooperation between the police and a division of ICE. And breaking news in San Francisco, several people shot in the city's Mission District in the last 40 minutes. San Francisco police think they have finally solved the murder of two people on March 14, 2006, and five other murders over the last 12 years. If we don't give up on these cases. Today in federal court, 10 men were charged with being gang members. Nine of them were charged with murder and faced the death penalty. They're accused of committing four deadly shootings in San Francisco starting in 2006 and one in Richmond in 2009. A total of seven victims, including a 16-year-old who was leaving a friend's party when he was killed in 2009. Six of these ten accused Serenos gang members arrested were still at large living in your neighborhoods less than 48 hours ago. The effort to bring the men into custody was massive, about 200 law enforcement officers, including police from San Francisco, Richmond and Pacifica, and the Department of Homeland Security Investigations. Homeland Security Investigations is the investigative arm of ICE. Special Agent Ryan Spradlin says even though HSI is part of ICE, immigration is not its primary focus. Our priority, our mission is to conduct complex transnational criminal investigations. He says all the men taken into custody are legally present in the U.S. And even though San Francisco police are constrained on immigration enforcement, the two agencies have figured out how to work together on non-immigration cases. Yeah. And the men who are now in custody will now get attorneys and be back in court next week. So this cooperation between the feds and the local police, not really something we hear a lot about these days. How does that happen? Well, actually, today, Special Agent Spradlin said that eight years ago, the San Francisco police reached out to HSI and asked for help solving some of these cold cases that were murders. And today, what we saw was a result of those years of hard work. I don't like to solve more. Ten people indicted are alleged members of the 19th Street, 16th Street Serenios. They are accused of committing seven murders, along with other violent crimes, including robberies to maintain control of their turf. Today begins the long-awaited path to justice for the victims of these murders and their families and friends who they left behind. One of the homicides occurred 12 years ago. The people that are in this room that investigated these cases never gave up. Homeland Security Investigations is the investigative arm of U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement. We do not initiate or participate in cases because of someone's immigration status. When HSI gets involved or initiates a case, it's because of somebody's suspected criminal activities. Six of the defendants were arrested yesterday. These individuals that were arrested are very violent individuals. A seventh defendant was taken into custody from Santa Clara County Jail. Three other defendants are currently in custody of the U.S. Bureau of Prisons. We should especially commend the SFPD for pushing aside misconceptions about our mission to partner with us in the interest of taking advantage of the critical public safety capabilities HSI has. The seven murders occurred in San Francisco and Richmond between 2006 and 2014. In San Francisco, Melanie Woodrow, ABC 7 News. Big story tonight at 5, the search continues for those responsible for shooting eight people, one fatally, at Lake Merritt in Oakland on Saturday. Police believe there are multiple shooters and gangs and groups are said to be involved. Crown Force Dan Kerman reports. Monday, Oakland's police chief confirmed what many have thought. Saturday's shooting at Lake Merritt was gang-related, however not Oakland gangs. We believe that this was directly related to group and gang violence. And group and gang violence not even connected to the city of Oakland. This appears to be group and, group and gang violence related to the city of San Francisco. As 10,000 people filled the lake, seven people were injured in the shooting and one was killed. And while police believe some were caught in the crossfire, others, they say, were targeted. There seems to be some group or gang feud going on. It appears that they may have met or encountered each other during the festivities at the lake. Police believe there were multiple shooters, none of whom have been identified or caught. But the chief credited the 60 officers at the scene for their quick response. 
This could have been far worse than what had happened. And it's a tragedy, but it could have been much more tragic. Well, Chief Armstrong admitted you can't police your way out of gun violence. He also said it's not time for city leaders to cut police resources. The resources that we had out there, we wouldn't have had those resources uh, six months ago. We wouldn't have these resources if budget things that people want to push forward in the city, if they come to fruition. We won't have the resources to actually bring forth uh, the safety needed to ensure that events like this are safe in the city of Oakland. And so I think this is a call to all of us to recognize the need for public safety. Oakland police will now be working with counterparts in San Francisco to help track down these shooters. They'll also be reviewing numerous people pieces of surveillance video. In Oakland, Dan Kerman. Crom At 11, a wild shootout on a San Francisco street leaves an entire row of homes riddled with bullets. And as police look into whether it may have been gang related, KPI X5 Sarah Donchi got a look inside one of the homes that was hit. Almost every single person we talked to in this part of the Mission District woke up early this morning to the sound of gunfire and not just a few shots, dozens and dozens of rounds that hit almost every single home on this block of 25th in San Bruno. You could see a lot of them on the side of the buildings in the walls, the garages, the windows marked with San Francisco police evidence markers. And there is video of part of what happened here this morning. This is security camera footage from a neighbor that shows a man running down the street, firing a gun alongside a car. What the video doesn't show is an apparent shootout. San Francisco police say more than 100 rounds were fired. Multiple shell casings were found. Several homes, a school and cars were hit with bullets. Thankfully, nobody was killed. San Francisco police say two people ended up driving themselves to the hospital. Unclear what their roles were in this entire shootout. Neighbors said that one of the bullets ripped through the outside of his home into his garage and into his workspace inside. And one of the bullets actually went into a room where a woman was sleeping. Thankfully, she was not hit. But it was a major, major shootout on this street this morning. It seems almost half a dozen buildings were hit with bullets this morning. That's why neighbors say they are so grateful that nobody inside these houses or cars was injured. San Francisco police say they are still investigating. If you have any information about what happened here this morning, give them a call. In the Mission District, Sarah Donchi, KPIX 5. What's going on, you guys? Welcome back. Another episode of Green Lit Gang TV. Today, we're going to be going to San Francisco with it really quick. I appreciate all the views. I appreciate all the likes. If you guys like what you are seeing, like, comment, please subscribe. It means everything with the likes, the comments, the subscriptions. Keeps me going. Keeps me motivated. Um, love interacting with you guys. I love when you guys answer the questions I pose in these videos. So today, we're going to be talking about the infamous 19th Street and 16th Street Sorenos. Uh, in the Mission District in San Francisco. They have a long, violent history dating back over two decades. Um, basically, the 16th Streeters are a younger version of the 19th Streeters. The 19th Streeters came around in the late 90s, and then in 03, the 16th Streeters came along. All right? Now, they operate. The 19th Streeters operate between 19th and Mission Street in San Francisco. Their territory is Dolores and Franklin Park on Bryant Street. They were found in the late 90s. And then in 03, like I said, the 16th Streeters were founded. And their territory is between 16th Street and Mission Street. Their rivals, the Norteños, if you guys have been living under a rock, I don't know how you wouldn't know that, right? So the Norteños are only a few blocks away in the Mission District. They operate on 24th and York Streets, okay? Now, again, we've covered this in other videos, but for those who haven't seen it or don't know, the Norteños answer and operate with La M.A., the Mexican Mafia. The Norteños, they operate and answer to the NF, the Nuestra Familia. Okay, so these guys run the streets. These guys run the prisons. It just is what it is with numbers, with violence, um, friends and family on both sides of the border controlling operations with the cartel. They've got everything unlocked. They've got Mexico where a lot of the drugs are coming from. They've got the prison systems on lock where a lot of the main orders from the big dogs are coming down. And then they've got the streets on lock where the day-to-day -day operation stuff is going on. So it makes for these stories it makes for my channel it makes for the all the other channels on youtube all the other things that you hear and read about and listen about gang culture it thrives and and survives off of california and these cities in texas and these all over the country you see it's like a pipeline and the one i the reason i think i keep covering these norteño sorreño stories is because it's so interesting and fascinating and it's like a 
it's just like a perfect setup. You've got Mexico right there, California right there. California's got a huge prison population. The way politics are, it's just like a, a, a perfect situation for what we see uh, nowadays. Uh, each and every day, the violence that continues to go on, the drug dealing that continues to go on, and these big RICO cases that keep coming down. And this one's no different. We're going to be covering... The indictment of 10 Serenos, they were indicted on RICO charges, including seven murders, narcotics trafficking, much more. Now, the interesting thing about the murders is the murders were almost cold cases. Um, really quick, we're going to go over those 10 individuals. They were Jonathan Aguilar, 31 years old, a.k.a. Trumpo, Luis Salinas, a.k.a. Lonely Boy, 33 years old, Juan Carlos Gallardo, Huero, 29 years old, Huero, light skin, white, right? Jose Gonzalez, a.k.a. Ghost or a.k.a. Fetty, 36 years old. Orlando Hernandez, a.k.a. Cristo, 35 years old. Michael Reboleto, a.k.a. Gallo, 30 years old. Mario Reyes, a.k.a. Shy Boy, 38 years old. Luis Rojas, a.k.a. Grizzly, 31 years old. Eddie Rubina, a.k.a. Rhino, 29 years old. Weston Venegas, 30 years old. Cartoon, a.k.a. Cartoon. First thing, you'll, first thing that catches my eye, at least, is their ages. That is old in gang years. Gangsters age. It's like dog years. Okay. 35, 38 in gang years. That's might as well be 90. And we get, a lot of guys don't make it that long or they don't make it that long without getting life in prison. A lot of times if they're on the streets at that age, they've probably been in and out of prison at least a couple times. Um, it just is what it is. It, it just comes comes with the territory. So... This indictment came down in April of 2018. Now, the killings happened from 06 to 13. And to me, it makes sense because, okay, you've got these killings that lasted seven years, right? You got seven murders that they tied to that lasted from 06 to 13. These 10 people get picked up in 2018. And I believe that those people participated because the killings go back over 10 years. So it's not like you could have a 21-year-old do it or a 23-year-old, 24, even 25-year-old do it, right? I mean, maybe when it was 15, but... The ages fit. The, the ages fit the crime. Um, and it all tied into the turf war, right? With the Norteños, with the NF, and the marching orders they get on a daily basis from the Mexican Mafia, from the big dogs up in the California prison system. Nine out of the ten were arrested, were charged with murder. It took over 200 officers for multiple agencies. The lead agencies, obviously, were the San Francisco Police Department and Homeland Security. Um... And it took a long, long time. This is kind of one of the interesting ones. I will say that they were. They were cold case murders. And so you wonder how hard it was to probably get evidence, to maybe get witnesses. Um, I think the fact that people just disappear, right? People just disappear. Some of these people are really involved in the streets. Some of these gang members, they have ties to Mexico. They just slip right back across the border and they're gone, man. Or if you're witnesses, they slip right back across the border. So it's very, very hard to build a case. Um, but once they do get them, once the feds do get you in their sights, it's a wrap. Normally, if the feds get you in their sights and they get you on the RICO charge, it's a wrap. Now, you're not seeing that in the YSL case. If any of you are following the Young Thug YSL case, that is an absolute shit show over there in Georgia. But that is a state level RICO. For those of you that don't know, that is a state level RICO. That is different from the feds, uh, just to throw that out there. But still, a RICO case. Um, but normally, RICO means done. <laughs> RICO means we're all going away for a long time. RICO with murders mean we're all going away for a long time. Um, there was really interesting point in this and another piece to this as to why I think it took so long. There were no collateral arrests. And what that means is you guys have heard me tell stories, right, where the killing of so-and-so, these three were arrested for it. They are the ones that pulled the trigger. And then there will be another article or I'll post, post another news story on the video you're watching and the girlfriend of the guy or uh, a co-conspirator was arrested two months later, right? Because there's always kind of loose ends that aren't tied up. It really wasn't the case with this. These guys got arrested for this. These guys did it. Um, I mean, I'm sure there were others that picked up. When I read the sentencing pages, there were some other names listed. Uh, but as far as the murders went, they had who they had. So... Basically, these guys go to get sentenced. Um, the, the prosecution makes a comment that says their cheerful nicknames, Rhino Cartoon, Cristo, Huero, Trumpo, and Shy Boy might make the men from San Francisco's Mission District sound harmless. But prosecutors said they were all members of a criminal racketeering enterprise known as the 19th Street and 16th Street Serenios. 
that's just legal talk. That's just blah, blah, blah. The feds, they do a good job. They do their job. They get these gangs off the street. But at the end of the day, they they go for headlines. The feds go for headlines all the time. That's why they go after a lot of rappers. They embellish. They want to spice things up. It, it just is what it is. So, and, and they have – the federal government, you guys, it's so powerful. I can't the, – the, they do not have to follow the same rules as a lot of these state courts and these state prosecutors have to do. The feds, they can just come in with this wide sweeping indictment and wrap you up in a RICO. And, and it's just – I think it's bullshit. I don't think it's right that if you guys really look into how the federal government uses this RICO statute and this RICO law – BS. It's it's total BS. But regardless, these guys in between the, the shootings, the killings of rival gang members, drug sales, firearm violations, assaults, and robberies, they got sentences ranging from 11 to 32 years. U.S. Chief District Judge Richard C. Morg of the U.S. District Court imposed the sentences, and even the prosecutors described them as cold cases. Um, these murders committed between 2006 and 2013. The indictment wasn't filed until 2018. And, yeah, I mean, it just is what it is, you know. And the 19th Street and the 16th Streeters, they, I mean, it's two separate names, but they function as one. They are a unified association, and they are a, they're an enterprise, man. They are about making money, turf, power, and they combine their powers and it's absolute no joke. So there you guys have it. Another video, 19th street, 16th street, Rico charges, seven cold case murders, 10 gang members wrapped up in it until next time, guys. Peace out.